Praise the Lord. Hey, God bless you. I wanted to give you a word of encouragement for those that are trying to do something for God. I know how it goes. You step out by faith, praise the Lord, wanting to uh, make Jesus Christ known to your world. You're, you're trying to shine the light of God to your family, to your friends, to complete strangers. And I know that sometimes when you're doing that, you can face a little bit of opposition. You can face a little bit of discouragement. But I want to I want to tell you to continue. To continue. To earnestly contend for the faith. This is a spiritual warfare. And so sometimes when you are doing a work for God, you might agitate some people. You might begin to stir some things up. But that's okay. Praise the Lord. Because with progress, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure. You're going to feel a little bit of pressure, sometimes too much pressure. But keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Continue. Don't give up. Don't give up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want to take you to Ezekiel. Praise God. Ezekiel chapter 1. And I just want to read some scriptures. But I also want to just give you what the Lord laid on my heart. This is an encouragement for those of you that are being busy about what the Lord has called you to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ezekiel chapter 1. Now, it came to pass in the 30th year, in the 4th month, in the 5th day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chebar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Praise God. Before we go further, I want to uh, talk to you right here what was happening in the prophet's life. Amen. He was in captivity. He was amongst the captives. But while he was in captivity and amongst the captives, the heavens opened up. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> when God want to move, God wants to move, He'll make a way. Praise the Lord. The heavens opened up and He saw visions of God. He saw visions of God. Then say that everyone saw the visions of God. He did. As God deals with His people. Hallelujah. And then if you look in verse number 3, it says there that the Lord, the word of the Lord came expressly unto him praise God thank you Jesus there's something amazing when the word of the Lord as you are reading it sometimes you just read you just read and you're just skimming and you're just reading it but as you are reading it the word of the Lord expresses himself to you you start to get rhema you start to get hidden manna you start to get, my God, this word is alive. And this word is speaking to me. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You start to get a quickening. A quickening in your spirit because of the word of the Lord expressing himself to you. And that's what was happening to the prophet. Then also in verse number 3 at the end it says, And the hand of the Lord was there upon him so look at all these different things that are happening as he's in captivity number one the heavens open up number two he starts to see visions of God number three the word of the Lord expresses himself expresses to the prophet so he starts to hear and that word is bringing knowledge and understanding and revelation and insight 
to the prophet. Praise God. And then lastly, we see that the hand of the Lord was there upon him. The hand of the Lord, you're going to feel the Spirit of God be upon you. You're going to know that His power and His might is upon you to do the work for Him. So, my friend, do not be discouraged as you're going and as you are sowing and as you are doing the work that the Lord has commissioned you to do. Praise God. Let's keep reading. In the name of Jesus. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. This uh, scripture made me think about when the apostles had received the Holy Ghost. Well, what happened there? And what do we see here? Here we see in verse 4 that a whirlwind came out from the north and then a fire enfolding itself. And you look in the book of Acts when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, what happened? First the wind came and then the fire. Wind and fire. So I was just like, oh wow. The things that the, the apostles had received the, the uh, supernatural spiritual experience that happened to them the prophet had something like it something similar wind and fire praise God thank you Jesus verse 5 also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance they had the likeness of a man and every one had fa uh, four faces, and every one had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings, on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another they turned not when they went they went every one straight forward how they go straight forward how many every one of them they were going straight praise god verse number 10 as for the likeness of their faces they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward. Whither the spirit was to go, they went and they turned not when they went. Praise God. God bless you. The whole purpose of this is to be an encouragement to you. That as you continue to go out and do the work of the Lord, what He's called you to do, I know sometimes it can be uh, very discouraging because maybe you're not seeing the results that you would desire to see. But don't be discouraged, my friend, because you're not seeing the growth, because you're not seeing the healings, because you're not seeing the ministry, because you're not probably not seeing the miracles, probably because you're not functioning at the level that you're reading about in the scriptures. Do not be discouraged. Maybe you're uh, suffering some persecution. Maybe you are uh, being ridiculed for what you believe. But my friend, yoke yourself up with these prophets and yoke yourself up with the apostles and let me talk to you about these faces let me talk to you about them because as you are going we need to learn how to adapt or adjust the first face I want to talk about was the face of the lion because sometimes in our ministry when we're ministering 
we need to put on the face of the lion. And the lion, our example, is our lion of the tribe of Judah. That is Jesus Christ. He is our king. And so sometimes we need to minister as bold as a lion. The Bible says that the righteous shall be as bold as a lion. So sometimes when you need to speak that word of faith, Pray that prayer of faith. Minister in such a way that you need to have boldness. The apostles even prayed, Lord God, grant unto us boldness. Lord, grant unto us boldness. We need to be emboldened. Praise God. And when you're doing a work in the Spirit, this is not us trusting in our own ability or the arm of the flesh. We need to, hallelujah, be emboldened with what God has for us. Amen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, through God, to the pulling down of the strongholds. The next face that I want to talk to you about is the face of the ox. And sometimes when you are pioneering a work, praise God, you're going to feel like you're all by yourself. But that's okay. Because the face of the ox you can relate to. That ox, when he's plowing that field, he don't need no encouragement for nobody. He's got one duty. He's got one task. I need to plow this field. I need to get it for the Lord. And it reminded me of the ministry of John the Baptist. So let's go there real quick to Mark chapter 1 and I want to read this for you Mark chapter 1 verse 1 it says the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ the Son of God as it is written in the prophets behold I send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before thee hallelujah the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Make his paths straight. Praise God. So that ministry, that face of the ox, you're going to have strength there. You're going to have strength to do the duty and the task of what God wants you to do. And it's not going to be for everybody. Not everybody can function with the strength of the ox. But praise God for the men and the women that do. Hallelujah. Straighten up God's highway. Make those crooked places straight. Preach repentance. Hallelujah. With the strength of the ox. Amen. And if you look at the ministry of John the Baptist, people came to him. He was not at the temple. He was not in the synagogue. He was in the wilderness preparing the highway of the Lord. Telling people, you need to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. If there's wrong in your life, you need to make it right. Hallelujah. And so you see, when you're functioning in the, in the strength of the ox, this is not going to be a pretty uh, uh, ministry. No, you're going to get dirty. You're going to get dirty. It's going to be hard work. It's going to be grueling. Praise God. But you're yoked up with the Lord. And you're preparing the highway. You're preparing the highway for Jesus Christ to walk the ground that you are plowing. To walk the ground that you are plowing. And sometimes, praise God, we got to plow deep into men and women's hearts. They're not going to like what we're saying. They're not going to like that message of, hey, you need to change. You need to repent. You need to get the sin out of your life. You need to get the wickedness out of your life. You need to get the crooked places and straighten them out. They're not going to like it. They're not going to like it when, you t when you're telling them that they need to change. But this is pleasing unto God. And repentance is for everyone, myself included. There's no one exempt from the pathway of repentance. 
Hallelujah. And so the zeal of the Lord has to consume us. Praise God. But that ox don't need a pat on the back. He knows his mission. His mission is to keep that, to keep that pathway straight. To keep all the, the rocks and the and the and the weeds and the thorns and all that stuff that would prevent a crop being sown. All those things that would get in the way. Hallelujah. That ox has got the strength. That ox has got the strength. So we need to be able to function in the face of the ox. The next face I want to talk about is the face of the eagle. The face of the eagle. And this is the prophetic. This is when God gives you the, the ability to start to see. To start to see what's further on down the road. To start to see what's happening time now. And God giving you insight. And, and, and then God being able also to give you the things that have happened in the past. This is the prophetic. Hallelujah. And so we need to be able to function in the face of the eagle. You notice that wherever the spirit of the Lord would move wherever the Spirit would move these would these creatures would be joined together and they would move straight forward wherever the Spirit would want to move now the last face I want to talk to you about was the face of man the face of man because that's who we are we're people we're human beings and we can relate to one another we can understand pain and we can understand hurt and we can understand suffering. We can understand those things that I might experience or that you might experience or those that we are trying to reach. Hallelujah. We're relatable. Hallelujah. We have to be able to be relatable to the people that we minister to. Now you're being spirit led. We're being spirit-led in the ministry that God would have for us to do. So I'm saying to you, hallelujah, don't quit. Don't quit just because you, you might face some adversity. Just because you might face some persecution. Just because you're taking a stand for the Word of God. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ. Come on, my brother, my sister. Let us be led by the Spirit and let us adapt to the circumstances and the, and the situations that we are faced with. And God help us to know and to have the wisdom. Am I acting like a lion? Am I putting on the face of the ox? Is this task calling for me to have the face of the eagle? Or am I flowing? Am I flowing and relating and just being a fellow brother, a fellow sister? Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you as you walk in the Spirit. God bless you as you walk in the Spirit, as you're led by the Spirit. May God favor you. May God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you.